promotions, matchroom boxing, gold star promotions, seller, gimmick fight promotions, and 258. Now at this time, I would like to introduce the fighters to the stage. But coming first, Ngannou's longtime trainer, Dewey Cooper. Next to the stage, long-time promoter of Anthony Joshua, Mr. Eddie Hearn. Warren. time we speak to the fighters please welcome the predator francis ungarn and last but not least former two-time heavyweight champion of the world anthony Joshua. We would like to, at this time, thank the hosts and the people that made all of these huge fight nights that we've seen over the last few months, the last couple of years possible. His Royal Highness, King Salman Abdulaziz Al Saud. The Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman. And of course, the Chairman of the General Entertainment Authority of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Gia, His Excellency, Turkey Al Al Sheikh. And I'd like to throw to His Excellency, who's stood up there on the balcony, to say a few words about this historic event. Where is it? Come, on. Come with me. Should be. Sorry, I want to speak in Arabic, please. في البداية أحب أرحب بالجميع. To start with, I would like to welcome everybody tonight. أتقدم بخالص الشكر لمولاي خادم الحرمين الشريفين حفظه الله. And I send all my thanks to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz. ولسمو سيدي رئيس مجلس الوزراء قائدنا الملهم عراب الرؤية داعمنا اللي لو لا الله ثم منه ما كنا نقدر نعمل أي شيء من هالشيء. And my thanks also extend to His Royal Highness Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Our guiding and inspiring leader. May God bless them both. I need from you three minutes to talk about important things. إحنا حريصين في المملكة العربية السعودية أن نقدم للأسواق مباريات مهمة. We are in Saudi Arabia take extreme care to present to the markets very important matches. الجمهور في اعتقادنا أننا نحرص أن يحصل على مباريات قوية بأسعار مميزة. The fans also would like to receive and be have access to important matches in very good prices. لهذا أنتم تشوفون النوعية هذه من المباريات. And this is why you see and you are, you are watching and seeing this type of matches being promoted. أنا أتعامل مع الملاكمين والبروموتر كأخوة لي. I deal with the boxers, the sportsmen, and their promoters as my brothers. عندهم أرقام الخاصة ويتواصلون معي بشكل مباشر. They all have my private number and deal with me directly. إحنا بنحاول فكرة جديدة في عالم الملاكمة. أعتقد أن تشوفون البوستر هذا اللي مستوحى من Street Fighter Game. 
you, we are trying to uh, impose or prevent, present some new form of promotion of, the, of this game. And you can see that it is inspired by this type of uh, uh, poster that you can see in front of you, which is inspired by... Street Fighter game. Street Fighter game. Uh, and and also, you can see the commercial poster for the big game, Ring of Fire, on 17 of February. And you also see the posters and the promotion of the biggest fight, which is going to happen on the 17th of February. Okay. The Ring of Fire. You understand now why is Joshua against Angano? I, I do understand. I don't know, but clearly there is an important <laughs> match coming up. You will see the result of this match. It and will connect about the result of the 17th of February. This is our idea. Yeah. Thank you. You're right. I hope I will tell they all all the people said to me, don't talk like this, Angano, but I, I, I think you will understand me. You know I, I look to you as a brother. But I want someone to stop you. I want the the the, the boxing <laughs> you, you are uh, the yeah, you, you know, keep looking, keep looking, see, see, brother. You haven't found it yet. The word of boxing to stop you. Yeah, uh, and uh, I think it will be tough match. You you see the last version of Joshua. We get him back, and uh, I think it will be something huge. The result of this match, it will go uh, in the future. In 24, we will try with Eddie and Frank to deliver to the market. Very big fight. This is the important thing. And second, I want to talk about two cards I want to do in 24, and I want to see it. The first card is between Frank against Eddie. <laughs> Each one of them will choose five fighters and do night against each other. Done, done. We'll do that. <laughs> the third, the third, the third things, I want to see Arator and Bubble, and I want to see it in June, and I will spoke with Top Rank, inshallah, about it. All the fans want to see it. In the end, I hope to have big fight, and I want, in the end, to show Joshua and Angano what's waiting for them after the result. Please, can you put it in the screen after the, the result? This is will wait for them after the result of the fight in the 8th of March. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, one uh, question. One, there is one more question yes, that His yes, Excellency have time for. Your Excellency, um, you mentioned about making all these huge events in Saudi Arabia. What's your response to some of the promoters, like Oscar De La Hoya, saying that some fights he's not sure should go to Saudi Arabia? We will miss him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Definitely, definitely a, a fantastic vision for boxing over the, the coming years. Now, back in October, we witnessed an, an incredible back and forth contest between Francis Ngannou and Tyson Fury, where I think to the shock of many in the boxing fraternity, Francis Ngannou gave Tyson Fury one of the toughest tests of his career. And safe to say it was a superhuman effort in, as a novice boxer in his first professional fight. And his opponent, Anthony Joshua, coming into this bout on the back of a spiteful, one-sided victory against an opponent that many believed could be a banana skin in the road to regaining his heavyweight titles. There's bound to be fireworks. Now, to start this off, I want to go to Hall of Fame promoter Frank Warren. Can you tell us a little bit more about your role, Riyadh Season's role, and His Excellency's role in delivering these incredible fights that we've seen over the last few months and years? Well, well first of all, I'd just like to say a thank you to the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, the General Entertainment Authority of Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Chairman His Excellency Turkey Al Al Sheikh, our co-promoters co Sella, Gold Star, Matram Boxing, as well as 258 Management, 
and Jimmick for making this event, Knockout Chaos, happening. This is the fourth event of the Riyadh season. And just saying how it is, if it wasn't for His Excellency and his team and the support of the Riyadh season of Saudi Arabia, these fights just would not be happening. That's a fact. It doesn't matter which way you want to dress it up. He has been instrumental in making those fights ha these fights happen, the previous fights, and instrumental in getting Eddie and myself sitting at the same table. And we've just made another big fight that's going to happen. His best against our best. We're going to make that event happen. This is just what boxing fans have been crying out for for years. They've been begging for us to make the fights, which sometimes have been not financially viable for us to make happen. But now it's changed. It's happening so quickly, so fast, and it's one after one great fight, followed up by fantastic undercards, brilliant undercards. I mean, it just keeps, keeps coming and coming and coming. We are in probably the golden age of boxing, world boxing, without a doubt. And if anybody doesn't want to be on board, then they're a fool. I'm very disappointed that Oscar should say what he said. He should know better than that. This is great for the sport. The fights are happening. And it's down to His Excellency and his team. And I am, for me at my age, I'm 72 next month, I've never seen anything or been involved in anything like this in boxing. This is just brilliant. And if you're a boxing fan, you're in boxing heaven. So from me personally, and I think from everybody in boxing, thank you, Your Excellency, for all you've done to help and make these events happen. Now, Frank, I think this is a fight that maybe even just a few months ago, I think not many of us expected to be at the table seeing Anthony Joshua against Francis Ngannou, but with Francis's incredible performance against Tyson, and of course, Anthony Joshua coming off the back of two consecutive knockout victories, there's, there's bound to be fireworks in this one. There will be, you know, um, I'll say how it is, but, you know, prior to the last fight with Tyson and Francis, I genuinely, genuinely thought that it would be a tough fight for a short period of time, but I then thought that Tyson would get the better of him and win the fight uh, very early on. But it turned out that Francis uh, done, brought something to the, to the boxing ring that I certainly never expected, and that was that he could actually box. We knew he was a tough competitor. We knew he could punch. We know that he's going to be a handful on the inside because that's the way MMA fighters fight. But he was, he was more than that. He was a switch hitter. He got his timing right, and he, he put Tyson, I think, through one of the toughest fights he's had for a long, long time. He put him on the floor. I will say I generally also felt that Tyson had an off night but, and came through it all. But, you know, this guy making a debut like that surprised everybody. Everybody was surprised. And I think AJ, I'm going to take my hat Except me. It. Except for you, that's true. And your team, they've done a great job. But I take my hat off to AJ for taking this fight because he's, he's fighting somebody. I know now there's video footage and there's foot, you know, you can see what Francis has done in a boxing ring, which Tyson didn't have the benefit of. But, you know, what has Francis learned from his first fight? Is he going to be a better fighter? Because he's going to look at things and feel that he could have done things differently that he can bring to the ring next time round. So I think for... For AJ, I think he's in a, in, I think he's going to be in a tough fight. I think this is knockout chaos because I think it will be a knockout. They both got bombs in their hands, and it's going to be interesting to see how the fight develops. You know, I, I do think it will be as the bell goes. It, I think because of their styles, it will be explosive. So for the fans, it's going to be something extra, extra special. And for the winner, as His Excellency said. The big fight's happening on the 17th of February, part again of the Riyadh season with Tyson and Usyk. The winner of that, would we like to see him with the winner of this fight? Everybody in this room would love to see that. Everybody in boxing would love to see that. So everybody's got something to aim for. And it's huge. It's a huge moment in time for, for boxing. Heavyweight boxing has not seen this happen in my lifetime. Big fights like this happening one after the other. So it's a fantastic moment. 
Eddie, I know you, you enjoy doing an interview, which sometimes gets you into a, a little bit of trouble. Uh, you were one of the first people to see, you weren't convinced about Francis Ngannou's boxing ability, but after the Tyson Fury fight, you were very quick to uh, give him his flowers and commend him, but you still believe there are levels between Francis Ngannou and your man, Anthony Joshua. Yeah, I mean, firstly, just want to echo what Frank said, um, you know, a, a thanks to the Crown Prince and, of course, his Excellency. This, this is like, I likened this earlier, this, this whole experience to championship manager, right? Imagine yeah. being the biggest fan in the world of boxing and having the ability to sit in a room and put fights together at the drop of the hat that the fans want to see. And, you know, in just five months, we have seen Fury against Ngannou, the Day of Reckoning card, Fury against Usyk, AJ against Ngannou, and so much more to come. This is such an incredible opportunity for boxing, and it's being delivered. And I know that, you know, we talk about His Excellency a lot, but you're talking about someone who has an incredible passion for the sport of boxing, someone that's unbelievably knowledgeable. I mean, you know, I thought that and Garnu against Fury was going to be a mismatch. And he, he told me off, he said, you're going to be wrong. And I said Callum Smith was going to beat Betabiev, and he told me I was wrong. And it's, it shows that he knows his boxing. Um, I met Francis and Garnu, we, we were just talking, maybe just uh, over or under a year ago in Las Vegas. He told me about his ambition to be in big boxing events. You know, firstly, I met a guy with an unbelievable story. I met a guy with a very strong mind but I didn't take him seriously, if I'm honest. I just have never known anybody to waltz into a sport and compete. And in my opinion, and it was very close, in my opinion, beat Tyson Fury that night. It's never been done before. You know, he may be unlucky that he's not sitting here as the world lineal heavyweight champion on his professional debut. Yeah. So now, as we said earlier, we take him very seriously. And after that fight, which we give him unbelievable props for, I said the biggest fight out there, outside of Fury against Usyk, is Joshua against Ngannou. And we'd already signed the Deontay Wilder-Joshua fight. And as soon as that show finished on December 23rd, His Excellency said to myself and Frank, we need to talk. What is the biggest event we can do on March the 8th? And the answer was this. In my opinion, you have the two biggest fights in the heavyweight division happening within three weeks of each other in Saudi Arabia. It is an incredible opportunity for AJ. As Frank says, there's, there's big jeopardy in this fight. This man is going to be the undisputed heavyweight world champion. I truly believe it. But he's doing it the difficult way, going through obstacles and what some might call immovable objects in this man to my left. The giant of a man the former UFC heavyweight world champion, but now a guy that we take very, very seriously in the sport of boxing. This guy's on a roll. He's working with a great team, and uh, we just cannot wait. This is a, a dream opportunity for the sport of boxing, and we're also invested to give the fans incredible nights, and this is another fantastic fight for Riyadh season. 100%. Now, we've spoken about him. It's time to speak to somebody who knows him very well, his uh, trainer, Dewey Cooper. Now, Dewey, your man... Shocked the world, but didn't necessarily shock your team in that incredible performance against Tyson Fury. That must give you huge confidence going into this fight against Anthony Joshua. First of all, <clears throat> greetings to the media here in London. Salam alaikum to your excellency, Turkey Ali Sheikh. Um, it was no surprise to us, the Tyson Fury fight. We told you all from day one what was going to happen. And the same thing applies here. We expect fire, but at the end of the day, the flaming fist of Francis will finish Joshua March 8th in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Nice and, nice and succinct. I enjoy that. Now let's speak to uh, Francis and Garnu. Francis, your pre-fight confidence was vindicated with your uh, performance against uh, Tyson Fury. Now, when you said you left, you, you left the UFC to, to have the biggest fights, with the biggest paydays, the biggest purses, on the biggest stage, it doesn't get much bigger than this, does it? <clears throat> no. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody here to show up, to come here and make this uh, press conference great. Thank you to my brother, the Excellency, uh, 
for one more time again, putting me in this position, you know, to live my dream, uh, have all those great experiences, such as the one that I had in Riyadh two months ago. It was amazing. So hopefully this will be the same thing uh, and finish the same way. Um, I've been sitting here, listening to people talking, and uh, even Eddie praising me, which I appreciate that. But uh, in the same time, at the same time, I'm not sure if he's honest or if he want just just want to get me sleep on his guy, which that's not going to happen. I'm just a beginner out here that's gonna go, that's gonna train really hard and do everything and come as an underdog to win the fight. So I don't take my last fight as a reference and think that I get this done and think that I get everything, you know, um, I know exactly where I, where I am at. I'm just a beginner and uh, I'm definitely going to come up better and um, yes, get better and better. So that's my, um, that's how I t see things. I'm getting prepared for a tough, uh, hard fight. Yes, the, the Tyson Fury fight was great. It was awesome, but that's now in the past, and I have a new challenge in front of me, and I take it uh, even more serious now uh, than before because now I think there is something um, uh, there is something more on the line, which is probably the undisputed. Though, so let's see. Maybe I will do something that nobody has done before, and I really believe that I have the tools of doing that. Um, starting off uh, having a win against AJ on, uh, on March 8th in Riyadh, which is going to be an epic fight. Not an easy one, but a possible one. And I'm going to take that. Francis, you, you. you haven't pulled any punches in the build-up to this fight already. You've come out and said, I've heard that AJ doesn't have a chin. I'm going to test that out. Is that your plan? Is it seek and destroy? Well... I'm going to fight him, so what do you think I'm going to do? Is to find, look for his chin. I mean, that's what happened in the fight, in case you... <laughs> in the fight, you're trying to hit somebody in the chin or wherever you can hit him, right? And then, uh, yes, I heard that he doesn't have a chin. I don't know if it's true or not. We're going to find out. I hope I had an opportunity to test that out. That's my, that's my wish. That's what I'm wishing for. It's time to bring in Anthony Joshua, unfazed by those comments at the moment. AJ, I'm sure, as for you, as it was for many of us here, it's a slight curveball to be sat here with Francis Ngannou on, on that end of the table. I know Wilder was a, a potential opponent after that uh, day of reckoning fight. It, that kind of went out of the window. What was your first thoughts when you heard of Francis Ngannou uh, as a potential opponent for you? No problem. Just not... It was, you, you'll fight anybody. I know you're... Yeah. Chasing belts, I know you want to be three time heavyweight champ of the world. Is this part of that plan? Um, every fight leads to somewhere. So this fight is my everything, my soul, my spirit, my mind, my body. And we'll see where it leads me. But right now, I'm not thinking about any championship belts or anything. My main focus is France's. And uh, to be fair, getting through. Uh, intense, focused training camp because realistically how I train is how I fight. So if I get victory in my training camp, I'm sure I'll get victory on the night. So that's all I'm focused on. Right now we're going to put the belts on hold because my main focus is getting through training camp and getting to the fight successfully. It feels like you and Ben have really gelled this uh, through the last camp and through now. You know, people are saying, I know you don't like to hear it, people say, oh, it's the old AJ is back, etc." What is it like working with him and, and how have you found it's that good. going into this fight? It's really good working with him, the whole team at the academy. They've, um, they've helped a lot. I still speak with Derek, Derek James in the States. Um, but being home and um, having someone just as good, like I'm just searching for greatness, really continuously searching for greatness, how I can elevate myself, push forward in every aspect of my game. And this is just another challenge. And during these challenges, I find out so much about myself, even though I already know who I am. And now I'm going to discover some new things about myself, but things that can take me to higher heights. No doubt. Now, before his boxing debut, he was uh, an unknown quantity. Now you've seen him for 10 rounds. You know, there is footage of him 
online you can actually look at and watch now? What does he bring to the table that you've got to watch out for? Um, I won't say too much, but he brings two arms, a body, like every other fighter does. But it's just his mind that's different to everyone. Everyone has their own unique, like, they're unique in their own way. But in terms of the frame and the makeup of someone, I've, uh, he's seen people like me. I've seen people like him many a times before. But it's just his mind that I'd have to conquer in the ring. You have to take someone's soul. You have to take their spirit. And I'm looking forward to the challenge for sure. Um, and that's it, really. It's going to be good. It's going to be explosive. I've got many ways to skin a cat. Um, I can count a punch. He can count a punch. We can both box, as he's proven himself to. And we can both trade. And uh, it was going to be a good, good fight. And uh, shout out to his excellency as well, my promoter. My whole team, 258, for getting me in this position to showcase why I'm the top heavyweight in the UK. And I'm not really too concerned about the world. I'm trying to conquer where I live. Like, I just want to conquer and make everyone know that I'm the one who puts boxing on the map. There's the riches of heavyweight around, especially in the UK. Now, to finish off, before we go to the face-off, I would like to uh, give the final word to uh, Eddie Hearn. Eddie. No, thank you, uh, Josh. And, and just to rep you know, replicate what everybody said here. Thank you for all turning up and being part of a huge event. Like I said, the, the ability to sit um, with His Excellency and, and Frank and, and brainstorm about potential fights for the kingdom is, is a blessing. And it's been very difficult to go through this press conference with the thought of Matrim versus Queensbury and the five fight dust up that's going to ensue later in the year. But as a fight fan, you know, although Callum Smith suffered defeat at the weekend, to hear him talk about Bivo against Betterbev, I think everybody in this room, these are the kind of matchups that we've been missing in boxing that can just happen so naturally when you've got someone who is so passionate and has the ability to make them happen. So, you know, welcome to Francis and his team um, and Anthony. And, and, you know, to hear people talk about these potential matchups in a heavyweight division. And like I said, if you can imagine the winner of this fight facing the winner of Fury against Usyk, and it's been a long, long dream of, of Anthony's and all of the teams to become undisputed champion. I know his focus is just on Francis and Garnu, but to have those opportunities is incredible. And you know, get ready for an unbelievable event that, that you know these guys are taking care of on February the 17th. Fury against Usyk, Joshua and Garnu, all within three weeks of each other. Just incredible opportunity for our sport and, and thank you for the passion and the vision. Boxing is definitely in an incredible place uh, with thanks to Riyadh Season uh, and everyone who's put this together. It's time for the face-off. Thank you.